Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Columbus Marketing Show. I am Nate Riggs, your host, and this is episode number five. We are glad to be back this week, and we have a bang-up show ready for you. Last week, we had Dr. Raj Agnihotri, who is the director of the Consumer Research Center down at Ohio University. Uh, he is also involved as the dean of the marketing school down there. Really great episode to not only find out some of the trends in higher education towards marketing research, but what is specifically happening down at Ohio University and why Columbus companies should care about that. Go back and make sure that you watch that episode. This week, we are changing it up and talking about the role of event and trade shows in marketing as part of your marketing mix. Uh, this is really a big, high-impact piece for a lot of brands, and we're going to dig into how this impacts perception, affinity of your brand, and even down to lead generation uh, for ver some of those different sales initiatives that you have. Our guest today is Jeanette Armbrust, who is the owner and CEO of Skyline Exhibits of Central Ohio. Jeanette received her education on the West Coast, attending both California State University and the University of California. And she has spent, she spent the first 11 years of her career in music and entertainment. We're going to dig into that a little bit. And then transitioned into becoming an entrepreneur and running Skyline Exhibits of Central Ohio uh, with her husband, Mark. And so welcome to the studio, Jeanette. Thank you, Nate. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. I'm curious. Uh, you moved from this really sexy career in entertainment and music into trade show exhibiting. I have to imagine that there's a lot of connection between the two, but why make the jump? Well, I started my career in the uh, record industry right out of college and um, really in events, actually, because I was the event marketing coordinator and production coordinator for both Sesame Street Live and also at the record industry. So I worked around the event industry in general, and then when the opportunity arose to move and become an entrepreneur, it just seemed like a really natural fit. Before we get into this week's interview and really dig into trade show marketing and its impact on brand and business, we are going to talk about a little bit of marketing insights, as we always do. Our topic today comes from a study uh, by EventTrack in 2014, and there's some very interesting research into the world of event marketing. Number one, this has become the world's fastest growing form of marketing, and more brands are using events and experiences to launch new products today than ever before. Uh, in fact, it's actually up from 48% uh, of respondents in this survey citing that they did it in 2013 to 59% citing it that they did it last year. 93% of the respondents to this survey say that events and experiences are more effective than commercials. And these would obviously be from brands that are advertising on television and radio. So Jeanette, I want to ask you, uh, why is event marketing so effective in terms of resonating with consumers? I think over the last few years of social media really taking off and everybody embracing that and how quickly that changes. And that's done a great, a great job of connecting a brand with a consumer but it doesn't allow you that hands-on experience. It doesn't allow you the ability to really see it, touch it, smell it, taste it, and engage with it. And so I think the pendulum is starting to switch back a little bit more towards that experiential marketing where mm -hmm. you give the consumers the opportunity to actually one-on-one -on -one experience the brand. And that's something that you don't get from social media. You don't get it from direct mail. It's really the last face-to-face -face marketing opportunity besides a sales call that you have. So a lot of companies are moving more towards giving consumers an opportunity to engage with the brand personally. It's interesting because especially in inbound marketing, we talk a lot about the idea of self-service information. Mm -hmm. Consumers do a lot of research independently. What you're saying is, yeah, but trade shows and event marketing and that experience really fits in deeper down into the funnel. By the time they've done that research and that gathering, they really just want to get face to face with a human being. Yeah, I mean, I think people want to, people buy from people they know, like, trust, and you don't get that on an email, you don't get that on Twitter, you don't get that on Facebook, and you want to buy something that you feel that you have a good experience with or you've had a chance to test it or, or know a little bit more about it. So I think that's where trade shows is fitting into that niche again and giving people, I mean, it's expensive to do a sales call with 300 people across the country, but if you're at a trade show and those 300 people are there, that gives you a really inexpensive opportunity to show them your brand and give them a chance to, to feel it and see it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be back with more from Jeanette Armbrust on trade show marketing right after these words. The Columbus Marketing Show is a production of NR Media Group. We change the way businesses understand and use digital media to connect with customers, earn their trust, and win their business for life. Learn more at nrmedia.biz. 
And we are back. So Jeanette, tell us a little bit more about the current landscape of trade show marketing. What is happening across the, the trade show and exhibiting industry that I think marketers should be aware of in, in Columbus? Sure. When I started the company in 2001, it was all about selling hardware and graphics and the structures that went along with that. Um, but now I think it's really becoming more about engaging with the, our customer on how do you pre-show market? How do you drive people to your booth? How do you get them to interact with your brand at the booth? And then obviously the follow-up, because 79% of people that go to shows are not even following up on those leads. So what I've seen change in the landscape is, is our customers really wanting to engage with us on how do we solve the big picture for them, not just provide the hardware and the graphics and the, um, the communication vehicle, but actually how do we address it all with them. And so that's really how I've taken the business and changed it and become more a part of their marketing team, engaging more with bringing their brand to life and mm -hmm. not just giving them something to put their graphic on. So that's really how it's changed is I think really working on ROI, really focusing on how we drive people to the brand and communicate the overall brand message. Um, and using trade shows as a really good vehicle for that. So let's break down the actual trade show experience. Mm -hmm. uh, we've all been to the trade shows where you're walking down the hall. I know I've been to, to dozens of them. And you walk past folks standing in the booth. And a lot of times I notice that uh, the team inside the booth, obviously they're all coworkers, but they are talking to each other as mm -hmm. opposed to really going out and, and, and trying to engage people as they're walking by. So from a booth staffing perspective, how can brands be most effective? I think they need to work with their team ahead of time. We do a lot of seminars with our clients, and actually I will go in or our team will go in and work with them before the show because it's rehearsing and, and getting that script of that engagement statement, that statement that's going to drive, bring them off the aisle, and work with their team ahead of time to practice that because it's not easy. It's like going to a dinner party or a cocktail party. You might think that your salespeople are type A people and they love to communicate, but it's very difficult to engage somebody on the aisle and drag them into your booth and give them a chance to experience and talk to them. So to work with them ahead of time and give them those engagement statements is probably one of the best things that you can do to prepare. It's not just about what color t-shirt you're going to wear and yeah. the khaki pants and who's going to staff the booth, but actually working with them on their engagement statements. So do you find that, you know, uh, I think the, the inclination is that our sales folks are going to be the best people to go to the trade show mm -hmm. as part of our exhibit team. Mm -hmm. Do you find that's the case or... Flipping the question the other way, how does a business of various different sizes determine who should be on the floor and, and staffing that booth? A lot of times it's not the salespeople that are the best. Um, you want to have those uh, personalities that aren't afraid to reach out and talk to somebody, but they need to be familiar with the brand. They need to be familiar with what you're, what you're selling, what your, your value propositions are. And a lot of times salespeople get focused on trying to close business, trying to get somebody to commit to them. Yeah. And that's not what this is about. This is, a trade show is the courting stage. You're, you're courting them, you're talking to them, you're explaining your value propositions, and then getting them to the next step. And the next step doesn't happen on the trade show. It happens when you get back and you follow up on that business. That's why the follow-up is so important. So sometimes the salespeople can't get that in their brains that they're not going to write business at the show and they're not going to get that commitment on the show floor. It's, yeah. it's the courting phase. And what and you're saying difficult. is that's okay. It is okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a process. You don't make a, a cold call and usually most of the time, you're lucky if you do, you don't ever get that commitment on a cold call. So it's, it's, the, it's the process and taking that journey with your customer and understanding that's okay. This is part of the process. So it seems that for everybody who had exhibited a trade show, really it's about awareness, but more importantly, lead generation or getting people who say, you know what, I'm interested in, in being in that follow-up loop. Historically, trade shows, or at least the larger ones, have, gi have given you the option to buy into using a, a named device on the floor to track engagement, mm -hmm. whether that's scanning people's business cards or scanning their badge. Uh, but obviously, there's a lot of, of other companies out there who may have their own ways to track the leads that mm -hmm. they're generating from the show. What's your experience with that? Is it okay for brands to kind of go the standard route in terms of buying the tracking device from the show or renting it from the show? Mm -hmm. Or do you recommend people use their own methods that they're already comfortable with? I say use whatever works. Just have a, have a system. Don't have it be a fishbowl collecting business cards. It has to be whether you're creating your own, own lead card where you have your own questions that you want to ask to qualify or you're doing the lead scanner. Uh, whatever is going to work that you're going to follow up on. But whatever you use, you have to be able to qualify the leads into A leads and B leads and be able to decide 
really all a trade show is, is you are trying to find the people that have an interest in your product. So you're taking the 5,000 people that are at the show and trying to find the 500, or maybe it's only 50 people that have a true need and desire to want to engage with you in the yeah. future. And if you get that, if you walk away with those 50 people, you're successful as long as you follow up with them. So however you can come up with a lead system that allows you to qualify the leads and then follow up with them, whether it's scanning it or writing it on a piece of paper, as long as it works. So I want to spend a lot of time talking about follow-up because you've mentioned that three, four, five mm -hmm. times. It seems to be very, very important. But before that, what if we're in a scenario where, you know, we've got the team at the booth, we've, we've set up the exhibit, everything looks great, and yet nobody's stopping by. Nobody knows that we're there. Maybe it's a crowded trade show like the, the National Restaurant Association show, which we're familiar with. What are some ways today that brands are using technology, using their staff, and using other means to get people to be attracted to their booth? You have to do that before you hit the trade show. How you, so? You, uh, you have to, whether it's uh, sending out... I love 3, 3D mailer pieces again. I'm going back to the old school because everybody's using email, everybody's using social media. Go back to the old school, three-dimensional mailer, whether it's a pop-up mailer or something, just don't do glitter bombs, but uh, whatever it is that somebody opens up and it gets their attention to come visit you on the show floor. If you wait till you get to the show, it's almost too late um, because then you're just trying to grab that aisle traffic that's going by. But if you can do something ahead of time that will drive the traffic to your booth, whether it's bringing this card in to enter into a giveaway or giving them half of one thing, like the box of it. I always have said the box of an iPad. They bring the box to the booth, they get the iPad, and you give it away to your top 20 prospects. Whatever you can do to drive that traffic ahead of time, you're setting yourself up for success. If you wait until the show, then you're just taking your chances. It's a 50-50. It's a crapshoot if they're going to come or not. And yeah. then you're leaving a lot of it to the skills of your booth staff. Which, again, you know, could be dependent on who's there and, and how much training they've had. So let's assume that you know, we've done the right things. We've attracted a good amount of people to our booth. They're the right qualified people. We've gotten leads, whether it's through the show system or our own means. Now the show closes. We tear down the booth and everybody goes back. What happens next? Well, usually what happens is the leads go in your in-basket, and a week later you haven't done anything with them, or two weeks later, and then... They sit there and, and they're not followed up on. And again, that's 79% of, of companies do that. So if you can just schedule, I always say schedule the first day back in the office as your follow-up day or use the evenings of your trade show to at least send out a reminder and a thank you email for them visiting your booth. But something needs to get scheduled on your calendar that forces you to follow up. Because as I always say, if you do that, you're ahead of 80% of your competition right there just by sending a follow-up or doing what you say you're going to do. So you guys obviously work with a lot of brands who are doing this. From, from the folks that you know, who's doing it really, really well? What are some examples that people can kind of look at and say, you know, we could, we could do something similar to that in our own business? There's a, a company here in town, it's a large company, that uh, uses a CRM system that they have everything pre-built into their system. So when those leads get uploaded after the show, there's automatically the flyer, the brochure that goes out. There's a follow-up that's scheduled with their account executive. It's all automated. Mm -hmm. um, now, they're a larger company, so they're able to pay for that and do that. But you don't have to have a big budget to do it. I think even setting, um, setting a, a, a schedule with somebody that's on your staff, even if it's an administrative assistant that sends out the flyers and the brochures right when you get back from the show, um, but the, the follow-up, again, is as you've talked about, and it's funny that you hit on that, because I am so passionate about you have wasted a lot of money if you have gone to the show and done all this work, and then you get back and you don't do anything with the fruits of your labor. And that, to me, is, is, is it's sad. Yeah. In your opinion, I mean, you know, I think in the recent years, and especially after 2008, 2009, a lot of people pulled out of exhibiting because it was a very high-cost game to get into. Yes. Was the result of that because people did not do the proper follow-up in terms of getting the return on, on a pretty substantial investment? I think it was that a little bit combined with people weren't tracking the numbers very well, so they just assumed that the show wasn't doing good for them or they weren't getting the return on investment. I think the tracking has gotten a lot better, and especially with the new CR, all the CRM programs that are out there and people paying much more attention to their marketing dollars, I think that has, has really helped. But, you know, we used to ask, to ask a client, they'd get back from a show, and we'd say, how was the show? And they would say good or they would say bad, and it was determined on how many people walked by. 
Well, they could have had a thousand people walk by their booth, but they might not have been the right people. Okay. So you can't determine whether or not your success is just how many feet crossed in your booth or by your booth. And I think a lot of people at the time, because they weren't tracking the actual numbers, just assumed that the attendance was down at the show, therefore the ROI was down at the show. And we've seen that change. So Skyline Exhibits, the corporate brand, has been around since 1980. Is that mm -hmm, correct? Correct. And you, you guys are the Central Ohio dealer, not a franchisee, but a, a dealer for Skyline Exhibits. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the corporate company and then the role that you guys play in, in terms of being a dealer of that company. So we're really fortunate that Skyline Corporate, as we call it, Skyline Inc., is uh, one of the top brands in the industry. They're always the pioneer, always on the forefront of research and development, usually the ones to bring the new products out to the market. Our relationship with them is really an extension where they're sales arm. So everything is manufactured at one of the four manufacturing facilities around the world that Skyline Inc. owns, and then we are the sales arm. So we represent them pretty much full scale, although we do have some other, other uh, products and brands that we will represent. But Skyline really is able to service all of our customers from a table throw to a large double deck island exhibit. So for us, that's really fortunate because we have really one main vendor and it really is, it produces a good synergy between us and the quote corporate office. So for our customers, that means we have one vendor, one stop, everything fits, everything works. And we aren't, we aren't trying to dog and pony show around multiple vendors to make yeah. it all happen. So one of the questions that's come up even, you know, throughout my career is, do we buy and own a, a trade show booth if we're going to be exhibiting a lot, or do we rent the model? Mm -hmm. You guys do both. What's the advantages and disadvantages, and how can a brand marketer or a marketing manager director make the determination between own and rent? Over the last, that's a great question, over the last, I would say, eight years, rental has become a larger component of our business than owning. Uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, if you go to less than three shows a year, you really should be renting because the cost of ownership far outweighs yeah. that. Um, also, renting allows you to switch things up a lot easier and you don't have the maintenance, you don't have the shipping. The other thing about rental, at least with Skyline, we have four depots across the country. So if your show is in Las Vegas, your rental comes out of Las Vegas. If it's in Chicago, it comes out of Chicago. So the cost of ownership goes down significantly, but it's the cost after ownership that is really, um, really benefits from having a rental. And again, just the ability to switch it up. If you're buying something that's $50,000, $100,000, you're going to want to use that for a while to get your return on your investment. But on a rental, if it's a third of that, then you don't necessarily feel so obligated to use it. And four years down the road, you don't feel you have to have the same booth. And when brands are switching, so, I mean, goodness, logos are changing, colors are, brands are changing um, so quickly yeah. that uh, it really allows them to have their their booth match their their brand values. And I've seen some of these these booth sets that, uh, for lack of a better way to describe it, they look like giant tinker toy sets, yes. if you will. And so is there an uh, advantage in that type of a booth format in terms of flexibility? For instance, you may do a 10 by 10 at one show and a 10 by 20 or a 20 by 20 at another show. Does that modular system, is it able to be catered to different formats in terms of shows? Absolutely. In fact, when we're in the consultative phase with our clients, it's one of the questions we ask, you know, how, what is your booth size over the year? How, what does your show schedule look like for the year? And what are those booths? Are they 20 by 20s, 10 by 20s? And we'll design something that will reconfigure to fit all of that. So that way you're really spending your money wisely and getting the most bang for your, your buck. You're not having to reinvent the wheel every time you have to go to a show with a different booth size. So obviously you guys are very, very good at this. And I know part of Skyline, at least in central Ohio, part of your business is really educating marketers on mm -hmm. kind of the art and science behind trade show marketing. Mm -hmm. How do you do that and, and where can people learn more from Skyline Exhibits of Central Ohio? We are passionate about educating because if people are successful at trade shows, they're going to continue to go. So I want to make sure that people are doing it better, smarter, faster, that they're really uh, getting the most out of trade show marketing. And there's not a lot of classes, you don't learn about it in marketing school very much, yeah. about trade show marketing. So we're really passionate about that. We do three to four free seminars a year on topics ranging from booth staffing to booth design to technology and how to integrate technology into your trade shows. And we do that three to four times a year at our, at our facility. Again, it's free. 
In addition, we have white papers that we produce. We have a monthly trade show tips newsletter. We have a blog. We have a lot of information that is found on our website or um, that we can link people to that gives them a lot of good information about trade show marketing. And a lot of it comes from our customers, not just here in Central Ohio, but because Skyline is a dealer network. There's 128 offices around the world, and their customers share information. And so it really becomes a, a large network of family and customers that we all share best practices. So uh, visitors or, or viewers of the show can go to Skyline Exhibits of Central Ohio. What's, what's the exact URL? SkylineOhio.com. SkylineOhio.com, and you can find these resources as well as a schedule of events there. Correct. Excellent. Well, we hope that our, our viewers will check this out and come and visit you guys. I know that I have been to and presented at a few of the events mm -hmm. uh, on various different things, and you guys always do a really high-quality uh great event with a lot of networking opportunities as well. So we'll put some links in the show notes to that. And I want to thank, thank you, you very much for, for being on the show today. Thank you. And we'll be back right after these messages. Cisco estimates that by 2018, video will represent 79% of all internet traffic. Take your marketing program to the next level by engineering video content libraries that are strategically designed to drive traffic, convert customers, and build lasting brand loyalty. Get a sneak peek of the Video Engineering Playbook, a new book by Nate Riggs. Download your free sample chapters by clicking this link. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all the time we have for today. Our very special thanks goes to Jeanette Armbrust, uh, owner and CEO of Skyline Exhibits of Central Ohio. Make sure that if you have a chance this year and you are looking to learn about trade show exhibiting, attend one of their free events. I promise you will not be disappointed. Come back also next week. We're going to be talking with Matt Minard of Simonton Windows about change management and marketing. You're going to really want to pay attention to that show. Matt has done a lot in terms of really driving change towards digital marketing into that brand. Simonton Edmonton's also one of our clients, I will disclose that, uh, but that means that we know what he's doing really, really well, so we're looking forward to having him in the studio. The Columbus Marketing Show is a production of NR Media Group. Uh, it is recorded each week down at our studios at 454 East Main Street in downtown Columbus. Please feel free to come down and visit us at some point. You can also watch the show on our YouTube channel. That is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash NR Media Group. Look for the playlist, The Columbus Marketing Show. If you do not want to watch it, you can also listen Listen to the show on Spreaker.com forward slash show forward slash the Columbus Marketing Show or find it on iTunes and catch this week's show notes on the post uh, that will be coming out on Friday on nrmedia.biz. Our very special thanks goes to the NR Media Group production crew, Nate Marshall, who is the production director. Alex Foley, who is content manager, Melissa Christian, who helps us handle all the logistics and book the guest, and our very special in-studio guest, my son, Caden Riggs, who was helping us operate the all-important clipboard for the show. Uh, Caden is off school today, so we decided to have him in the studio. As always, I am your host, Nate Riggs, and I will see you back here next Friday, starting at 6 a.m. with another episode of The Columbus Marketing Show.